Welcome, everybody. Uh, just to say that we're delighted as Airgrid to sponsor this very important and relevant topic for the evolution of the energy industry uh, on the island of Ireland. Um, it's also very timely, I think, because just last week the regulatory authorities have uh, released a consultation on uh, how we can best change or evolve the single electricity market that we have on the island to meet the requirements of the EU target model. And uh, we're delighted, uh, and again, congratulations to the, the IIEA um, for assembling a, a really excellent panel of speakers. Uh, so we're delighted that Jean uh, Vinois, who's acting director of the Internal Energy Market Directorate at the European Commission. Uh, we have Daniel Daubeny, president of the European Network of Transmission System Operators, NCOE. Uh, Garrett Blaney, commissioner. And Alison Kay, again, commercial director of the transmission at National Grid in the UK. So I, I think you'll agree, a, a, an excellent uh, group of speakers. Um, just to say a little bit by way of introduction, our role uh, in the move to the EU target model as Airgrid Group, as system operator in both jurisdictions, north and south, and as market operator across the island, uh, and as an active member of NSOE, um, heavily involved in drafting the network codes, I believe that we do have a central role to play on the move towards the European target model. And we are working very closely with the regulatory authorities uh, and are committed to playing our part in ensuring that the market and that the system operation arrangements are appropriate for the specifics of the Irish market here um, and that we move to allow us to, to, uh, on the island to play our part on the internal energy market. Um, <clears throat> Elaine asked me to just say a few words about the physical infrastructure that's underpinning the model, which is the interconnection. And as you know, we're developing the east-west interconnector. And I want to just maybe give you a few slides just on uh, how we're doing. Uh, I suppose first, first to say that we're on track. We're on track for uh, late summer this year. Um, and we're within budget. So that's always a good news story to, to, to have to report. Um, now, how do I move this forward? OK, there we go. So maybe just to talk a little bit about the East-West Interconnector. Um, it is a critical enabler in any move towards closer integration of the markets. So, uh, so together with the MOIL, uh, the East-West Interconnector, as I say, is on target for uh, late summer this year. Between the two interconnectors, we'll have of the order of 900,000 megawatts of interconnection capacity, which is about, I suppose, 14% of the peak load on the island. So it's, 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 uh, it's, it, it, it will, uh, we will be significantly interconnected. Uh, to uh, the market in Great Britain, and of course through that to um, to mainland Europe. Um, just to talk about the project itself, you can see there we are connecting between Woodland and Deeside, two very strong points on the Irish and on the network in Great Britain. Um, our project uh, comprises an element of uh, on-land undergrounding uh, in Ireland, then, of course, the Irish Sea and about 30 kilometres on land in Wales. Um, in Wales, the ducting and trenching is 100% complete and the cabling is about 84% laid, so that's very much on track. In Ireland, ducting and trenching is almost 100%. We're nearly there on, on the ducting and trenching and we have about 75% of the cable in place. All um, major uh, horizontal directional drills have been completed. Um, and that includes the crossing of the River Dee, which is a very, a very significant uh, crossing, but, uh, and obviously uh, a risk for the project, but that's now successfully completed. Um, we expect that all the land cabling and jointing and grouting will be completed by mid-May, and that the marine cable will be fully laid by the end of May. Um, in all of this, safety is of paramount importance, and it's top of our agenda in any meetings that we have with our contractor uh, we have over a million hours worked now at this stage without any serious accident and we're hoping, obviously, uh, and working very hard to make sure that that continues to be the case. Uh, maybe just a quick run through some of the slides here. Uh, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is a picture, a uh, fairly recent picture of the converter station uh, in Woodland. Uh, you can see the building itself is pretty well complete now at this stage. Uh, the transformer bay is back at the <coughs> back at, at the back here. The transformers are delivered to site and they'll be installed very shortly. Um, 
in Wales, uh, the transformers are already in their, in their places, so pretty, pretty well developed and on track in terms of the converter stations themselves. Um, in terms of the marine, um, we did complete uh, the 2011 marine program very successfully. Uh, we set out to, um, to do about 40% of the marine crossing in 2011. In other words, to advance some of the marine work into 2011, away from 2012, and that de-risks the project significantly, and happy to report that that has been completed. So you can see here the, uh, the NOSTAG, which completed about 40 kilometres here off the coast of Wales uh, very successfully, um, and also another eight kilometres uh, off uh, the coast of uh, Rush there. Um, next up was... Jumped ahead. Next up was the Team Oman, which completed about uh, another 44 kilometres, uh, uh, as you can see that section there, uh, out into the Irish Sea. Um, and that was followed by the Island Pioneer, which uh, effectively trenched that into the, into the seabed. So um, it remains then in the 2012 programme for about uh, 80 kilometres there to be completed by the, uh, the Connect, the, uh, the, the AMC Connector, which is uh, a newly built, one of the biggest cable laying ships in the world, newly built, it's being trialled at the moment, everything is going to plan. So that will be arriving in Irish waters in April of this year to complete the, the marine crossing. So we expect to be um, commissioning uh, from June through to August, that kind of time frame, um, and to be completed by, uh, by September. But of, course, but of course, the inter physical interconnection isn't enough. We also have to put in place the arrangements for traders to trade over the interconnector. So work is well advanced on the operational and commercial arrangements with a consultation is issuing this week on the capacity auction products. The access rules governing of how capacity is bought and sold were approved late last year. The auction management platform is implemented and the first auction on EWIC will take place in June of this year but of course it's already operational for the oil. Um, and the licenses from both uh, CER in Ireland and Ofgem in the UK have been approved. So um, it's a very exciting year, I think, for the completion of this, what I believe is a very um, transformational project for the Irish industry. Uh, huge, it'll signify a huge amount of change, a lot of which we'll be talking about here today. Um, and we are on the verge of very significantly increasing the integration between neighbouring markets, um, and very much in line, I think, with the direction that Europe is, uh, is, wants us to, to go. So we're determined as Airgrid, uh, as the Airgrid group, both Airgrid, Sony and SEMO, to play our part in ensuring uh, a success, a successful project, and that, critically, the benefits are realised for all customers. So with that, I'm going to hand over back to, to Liam. Thank you, Liam. Thank and, you very uh, much. Thanks, Dermot. Uh,